One of the powerhouses of Portuguese football for the majority of their 115 year existence and the most successful club in Portugal. Representing the capital Lisbon, it's SL Benfica. The Eagles have had an abundance of footballing stars developed through their ranks and are most notably known for their ability to consistently produce youth talent in their prestigious youth academy, dominating the Primeira Liga and of course their 100 year European trophy curse. Bestowed upon them by ex-Hungarian manager Bela Gutmann after winning the club's last European trophy back in 1962. Fast forward 57 years later and Sir What If is looking to lift the European trophy curse in this video as we'll be finding out what if Benfica never sold their best players from over the years. Yes that's right for the first time in the What If series we're traveling to sunny Portugal to experiment with the ex-Benfica players in career mode and believe me this squad is something to be desired. Before we get into the squad make sure to hit the like button down below, smash subscribe for some more FIFA career mode content coming your way follow me on twitter the link is in the description let's get straight into sir what if side here in portugal as always this one has been highly requested by you guys down in the comments below so thank you to everyone that has been requesting this we're going to go through the squad player by player and as you can see there in the top left hand corner it's a total of 31 players three goalkeepers five defenders 15 midfielders and eight attackers so let's get straight into probably the strongest position in this squad right now benfica have had some outstanding goalkeepers in the past and this video is going to showcase exactly what quality they had on their hands here as you can see Edison now the starting goalkeeper for Manchester City in the Premier League 24 now Manchester City did purchase him from Benfica and it was a big loss for the Portuguese Giants as yeah you can see what he went on to achieve with Manchester City Premier League titles and it's another big keeper it's the Slovenian Jano Black now of course at Atletico Madrid 25 years of age he's still so young and he's one of the world's best already Benfica had this man on on their hands and that is two solid goalkeepers like in previous episodes I'd said goalkeeper position was a position that I was worried about in this video it's a complete opposite Oblak and Edison in between the sticks could you get any better than that I'm not sure Benfica what have you done as we're gonna move on to another pretty solid position I'm gonna say Jacques Cancelo did play in the Benfica Academy did work his way up and only played a handful of games for them it wasn't a mainstay here at Benfica but did stop by in the earlier stages of his career had stints at the likes of Valencia into Milan, Juventus and has now made the big summer transfer move to Manchester City to join up with Edison. And now we move on to the backup right back. It is Barcelona's own Nelson Semedo, 24 years of age, is a solid backup and they did purchase him from Benfica. Was one of their main right backs that season and he made the big European move, was a really high potential star that season and really burst onto the scene with the Portuguese Giants. As we continue to move down, the defence gets even stronger here with Ezequiel Garay, the now 31 year old had his big breakout season in Portugal and was linked to the likes of Manchester United. That never happened. He went on to go play for Zenit, Valencia. Ezekiel Garay, another solid player at the back. But we shift our attention towards a player that did move to Manchester United from Benfica. It's the Iceman. It's the Swede at the back, Victor Lindelof. Now 23 years of age, is said to have a massive season at United this year and did make the straight swap from Benfica to the Premier League. And another player who made a big move from Benfica to the Premier League was in fact David Luiz. The now 31 year old Brazilian centre back has played the majority of his time in the Premier League at Chelsea after he made his big move to Benfica then moved on to PSG back at Chelsea and now most recently is at Arsenal. As we move on to the midfield now no it is not Fellaini with that massive afro it is another Belgian in Axel Witzel. The 29 year old CDM slash centre midfielder did burst onto the scene at Benfica was linked to so many big European clubs then went on to play for Zenit Borussia Dortmund he's currently at now and is just a solid midfield player in general to a player another CDM it's the Serbian Nemanja Matic another player who did go on to play for Chelsea there's a lot of history between Chelsea and Benfica with all these stars Ramirez was also another honorable mention that didn't make it into this squad because he's no longer in FIFA but he's another player that moved on from Benfica to Chelsea as well as Javi Garcia the ex-Manchester City wonder kid back in the day he's now 31 I cannot believe that so it feels like such a long time ago Eduardo Salvio has been a recent departure from Benfica he's gone back to his home nation of Argentina, the 27 year old right midfielder joining up with Boca Juniors over there in the Argentinian league. Could have had a big European move, but no, he's gone back to his home nation and fair play to him. Respect as Salvio moves on from Benfica. Now we have the Portuguese wonder kid, the boy wonder, the golden boy of 2016. Won the Portuguese league, won the Euros for Portugal, had an outstanding year, a breakout year. Renato Sanchez, what has transpired from then on? I do not know. It has been a rapid decline. He moved 
moved on to Bayern Munich shortly after his big season at Benfica, had a loan spell at Swansea City in the Premier League, completely flopped, and now he's back at Bayern Munich, 20 years of age, still has time to recover his career. It hasn't been a complete disaster yet, but hopefully he's back at Benfica now, and we could achieve some great things with him alongside another player, Andre Gomez. He's recently moved to Everton, however, went to Barcelona, didn't really do too well there, had a stint at Valencia too. He was originally at Benfica, has moved around quite a bit, and now finds himself at a permanent deal in Merseyside with the Blues. As we scroll down to the Italian, Brian Cristante. The 23-year-old versatile midfield is 78 overall. He's now at Roma in the Serie A, but has had stints at Pescara, Atalanta, and obviously Benfica. So we've brought him back into this team. Now is a big one. Gonzalo Guerez. Goncalo Gonzalo Guerez. I'm completely lost with this guy's pronunciation, but Guerez, we're going to call him. Has been a big wonder kid for Portugal in the past few years now. Has been representing them at national level. Now 83 overall, 21 years of age. He's now at Valencia in La Liga. I'm predicting him to be a big star for this team as we simulate through the seasons he could lead us to some glory the number seven a player on the older side i would say the 31 year old now nolito x-man city player now is out at sevilla a big one anderson talisca the brazilian who's now in the chinese league for some strange reason he's only 24 years of age so let's hope the brazilian can find his feet back here at benfica yet again at 24 there is still time for redemption as we shift our focus towards it's another player who who's had a bit of game time here and there for benfica didn't really break out at benfica it was more Monaco, where Bernardo Silva made his case, but the Portuguese midfielder, who's now appeared in these videos back to back, he appeared in the Monaco video, now he's returned home to Benfica, the Portuguese star who recently won the Nations League with Portugal, he's killing it for Manchester City in the Premier League, a Premier League champion, and the youngster is only 23 years of age, he has that something special, but Nicolas Gaetan is another one of those players who was a long servant at Benfica, now has moved on to the MLS, but hopefully he can provide a lot of experience to the squad the most recent departure from the Portuguese Giants one of their youth academy gems that they have sold for a mouth-watering amount of profit Joao Felix the 18 year old has moved on for a hundred million it's something in the nine figure range but Joao Felix the teenager has moved on to Atletico Madrid had a lot of big clubs sniffing around for him but somehow Atletico Madrid have picked him up he is one to look out for in the future and I'm sure will grow and develop throughout the simulation scroll down to another experienced player it's the Argentine Angel Di Maria a player that burst onto the scene here at Benfica then went on to play for the likes of some massive European clubs Real Madrid Manchester United and now at PSG G. He will be a starter for the ex-Benfica side and our 85 overall. He's still got something to prove here back at Benfica and can provide us with some quality in our starting 11. Fabio Coentrao will actually be our starting left back. For some reason now he can play right winger as well. A player that also did appear in the Monaco video. We've got a few Monaco players in here as well from the last episode. Holder Costa is another one. Now the strike force. This is where it gets interesting. Rodrigo, the now Spaniard who's at Valencia at 27 years of age, 83 overall. He's just a solid striker to have in your side with Luka Jovic, the Serbian. Yes, we all know the amazing season he had at Frankfurt has now moved on to Real Madrid for big, big money, but he was on loan from Benfica. Benfica originally owned him, loaned him out to Frankfurt. He just had an amazing season. Imagine if they kept Jovic and Felix in the same team that year. As we move on to the last striker, I believe it is Raul Jimenez now is killing up for Wolves in the Premier League and that is going to be the last player ignore the players out on loan they do not matter that is the ex Benfica side if they kept all their players it's just a well balanced side with a lot of experience a lot of young talent and players that can grow throughout the simulation that is how they'll be lining up it might change throughout the simulations but we have Coentrao, Lindelof, David Luiz and Cancelo as the back four Witzel and Silva in the midfield then we have Talisca in the cam slash center forward position Di Maria and Guedes on the left and right hand side and the man leading the line is Rodrigo until Jovic overtakes him in overall and he can be the starter. But for season one, that is how Sir What If's men will be lining up in Portugal. And yet again, we've crunched the numbers. We've done the calculations here off their base monetary values in the game. This whole combined ex Benfica squad has a combined value of £555 million. Pounds. And that's not including the likes of Jao Felix going for £100 million. His base value is really, really low. So it's just insane the amount of money Benfica could have gotten from these 
these ex-players that I'm sure they are living lavishly over there in Portugal. They're well and truly a selling club, which is fine by me. Benfica, like with Monaco, we need to have a chat with your sporting director. What's with all these sales going on, boys? But let me know down in the comments, what is your favorite ex-Benfica player and what player do you wish they would have kept? But we're going to simulate this first season, see how the boys do in, obviously, the Portuguese League, the Champions League, the domestic cup competition as well. I'll see you guys at the end of Season 1. All right, so it's the end of the first season with the ex-Benfica squad, and it's utter, clear and utter domination here in Liganos. Nearly an invincible season from the lads there with 26 wins, 7 draws, and 1 loss all season in a 34-game campaign, 85 points, 16 points clear of second place in Porto, Sporting Lisbon, Braga, and Tondela finish off the top five. It's absolute domination here. We've continued on the Benfica way, and they win yet another Portuguese league title. We move on to the Taca Portuguese. I'm not sure if it's called that in real life, but it's the Portuguese Cup, and they somehow managed to dominate the league, but not get into the final. They got knocked out on penalties there to Portimonese. I'm going to struggle with this video with these Portuguese names, but they lost 4-3 on penalties after it was 2-2 round one. Come on, guys. you got to lift up your game in the Portuguese Cup. But now, the Champions League. Let's see how the lads have gotten on. It is Barcelona and City in the final. But they managed to escape their Champions League group there. Sitting in second position just above Ajax and Athens. It actually went down to the wire there. Bayern finishing off on top. We'll see how far they got on. And they beat PSG 2-1 in the round of 16. They beat Real Madrid 3-1 on aggregate. So they made it all the way to the semi-finals and ended up losing to eventual finalist Manchester City 3-0 on aggregate. So a very deep cup run in season one. However, it's the Portuguese cup disappointment that really let us down in the end. We'll take a look and see who the star performers were this season. Sort it by goals and it's the Spaniard up top, Rodrigo with 23 goals and one assist. Our starting striker leading the line as we move down to Anderson Talisca, the Brazilian regaining some of his amazing form here at Benfica with 16 goals and 12 assists. Double figures in both goals and assists for him. Bernardo Silva with a big injury there so that might have hindered his season but 14 goals and 5 is for him. 26 goal involvements for the 30-year-old Belgian in the midfield. Luka Jovic off the bench, now 85 overall, got 8 goals and 1 assist in 26 appearances. Nolito at 32, still doing quite well there with 7 goals and 5 assists. Angel Di Maria, expect a bit more from him. He went down 1 overall this season, but 4 goals and 5. Fabio Coentrao from left back, 3 goals and 3 assists for him. Andre Gomez not doing all too much. Guedes, who I'm expecting a big episode from, uh, hasn't done too much in season number 1 with only 3 goals. Jacques Cancelo getting a bit of game time in there. Nelson and Semedo. Jimenez with not too much game time to show for as we scroll down is Jao Felix grown to overall. It was Edison who had most of the goalkeeping appearances there. Surprising considering Oblak is 92 overall but we'll see how that shifts and changes throughout season two. However that is the squad at the end of season one. This is how they'll be lining up going ahead into their second season looking to do a bit better in the Portuguese Cup and maybe try and get a European trophy under their belt. We'll see how Benfica, we'll see how the ex-Benfica boys do in season two. Oh, well, well, look what we have here. Two seasons in and our title defense did not hold up. It did not last as Sporting Lisbon, our bit of bit of rivals, Benfica's rivals alongside Porto as well. But the other side of town have won the league there with 80 points. We did not dominate unlike last season. We finished in second with 75. It's still qualifying for the Champions League though in season and three but it's a disappointing season in the league unfortunately nothing to celebrate domestically we're going to take a look at the Portuguese Cup but a big downfall from last season it's going to be Porto and Braga there in the final and don't tell me it's another round one elimination to Santa Clara come on guys what is going on in Portugal we're not having a good season down here Monaco and PSG in the final for the Champions League interesting final there we finished top of the group we were in group F with Spurs Leverkusen and Basel uh, Spurs edged out to finish in second and qualify and then we got knocked out of the round of 16 finishing first we got matched up against Juve and lost 3-3 on aggregate Juve win on away goals and that is our European hopes and dreams crushed right before our eyes and Monaco and PSG it's a French final actually so it looks like the lads had had a case of second season syndrome we might have to change up the formation and things for season three the final season but we'll take a look and see who our main performers were and I said he's gonna be a big star for us in this career mode. The ex-Benfica boy, the wonder boy, Gonzalo Guedes, now 23 years of age, starting out on the left wing for us. 19 goals and 10 assists, double figures in both. A total of 29 goal contributions as well as Bernardo Silva. 29 goal contributions for him, 
double figures in both goals and assists, 17 goals and 12 assists, an outstanding season for him. He's starting to come into fruition here. Rodrigo not having quite the season he did in season one, although it's still some decent numbers from him. Taliska, yeah, you'd expect a bit more from him as well as Luka Jovic now at an 86 overall. Ronaldo Sanchez doing decently in there with five goals and two assists as well as Brian Cristante now with five goals and six. Axel Witzel not really having the season he had in season number one. He did really well there. Angel Di Maria as well, not having the numbers we expected him too, but three goals and four assists is decent for the 34-year-old now. No, the 32-year-old. Nelson Semedo and Jao Cancelo shared that right back spot, as you can see there with their appearances. We moved down. Nemanja Matic doing all right, and it's still Joao Felix not getting too much game time. We'll see if that changes in Season 3. I think we'll go right and Lindelof were our main centre-backs, as well as David Luiz, and still it's Edison getting the game time over Oblak, so that's a bit of a weird one. We'll see uh, what happens in Season 3, but very disappointing. No silverware to show for it. See if they can redeem themselves in Season 3. It's going to be a big, big finale. So that is the formation going into Season 3. Hopefully, it can get us some results. Due to the lack of centre-backs, we've had to switch it to a 3-4-1-2 formation. Very attacking, very front-heavy. So, hopefully, it can deliver us some good results and some silverware for our last season. So, like I said, Season 3 was a chance for redemption for the Benfica lads. And it's redemption they've achieved. Winning the league two out of the three seasons now with 80 points this year. Nine points ahead of Sporting Lisbon in second with 71. Porto and Braga yet again finish off the top four as we retain our league title yet again to become Portuguese league champions, Liga Nos champions. It was just a little blip in season two. We don't want to remember the second season syndrome, but it seems like the lads have gotten it together in season three and we've delivered the league success. We'll take a look at the League Cup and we've gotten ourselves into the Taka Portuguesa final, the Portuguese Cup final, we'll just call it, against Benfica's better rivals, Sporting Lisbon. So that is going to be a very interesting match. We'll go ahead and simulate that, but we'll take a look at the Champions League to see what has gone down there. And it's an all-Italian final. That is very interesting. Napoli taking on AC Milan. I don't think we were in the Champions League, so we'll take a look at the Europa League and see what that has in store for us. Hopefully, we can do a bit in here. And it looks like we have a European final, a chance to to lift the curse in season three this has you can't write scripts like this this is written in the stars we are matched up against the italian side lazio it's an all italian champions league final and we're up against the lazali in season three for that europa league trophy the last european final for benfica was in fact against chelsea all those years ago in 2012 i believe but we finished top of the group six wins dominating the group finishing in first place we then went on to knock out arsenal on aggregate 2-1 then we went on to face Chelsea and beat them 3-1. We went to go ahead and beat Spurs 3-1. So we literally defeated three London clubs in a row. And then we beat Nice in the semi-finals 4-2 in aggregate. And we now find ourselves up against Lazio. So the treble is on the cards here. Benfica could literally have the best season ever in 57 years or so. But I know it's not the Champions League but it's a European title nonetheless. So we have our Europa League final first, and that is the side going out to face Lazio in the big dance. It's a chance to end the European curse. End it 40 or so years early than it's supposed to end, but we have a massive match here. This could be a historic moment for Benfica in all their history as we go in and face Lazio. I'm nervous for this one. We're, we're going to watch this one play out because it's going to be suspenseful. Trust me. We've got Felix and Jovic up top. Taliska, Guedes, Gomez. Oh, this side is absolutely brilliant. It's just the defense that worries me here. First half, not too much happening. Uh, but yet again, Felix coming in with the goal in the 50th minute. Gets in. He's one of our own. Benfica's own Youth Academy product. Haller gets a red card. Is sent off. Surely that is it. We skip to the end. And it's a 1-0 clutch victory from the lads. It was written in the stars for the Portuguese wonder kid to score in the final. Started up top. A baptism of fire for him. And he's won Benfica the Europa League. Their first European title in what? We're three seasons in now. So 60 years. And we've lifted the European trophy curse 40 years early. And Benfica. Benfica become Europa League champions. I seriously do not know how we can top that victory in the Portuguese Cup final, but it's a silverware we haven't won yet in this experiment with the ex-Benfica squad. They've probably partied too hard after that European win, after the trophy curse was lifted, but there's still a job left to do in the Portuguese Cup against bitter, bitter rivals. So it's a big derby here in Lisbon. Hopefully they're still not hungover from the Europa League final. Jovic gets us off a perfect start in the fourth minute there. The 
Serbian. Straight out of the blocks, not wasting any time. He is uh, energetic after that Europa League win. We might go ahead and achieve the treble here. Jao Felix, two goals, uh, two games, two goals. Viviana goes off injured. But Felix proving yet again, whilst Benfica shouldn't have sold him. It's another one of their Youth Academy products. Nelson Semedo there, the right back getting in amongst the action. And it's an easy 3-0 win there, lads. I, I was worried about this game considering it's technically away from home. But they've pulled through there with the win. A comfortable 3-0 win. And Benfica have gone on to win the treble. And there we go. What a sight to behold. It is Jano Black, our highest rated player in the squad at 93 overall. He is sitting in the press conference with that beautiful Portuguese cup. Finally, after three seasons, the lads have got their hands on it. I mean, it's taken three seasons, but it's the most successful season yet. Treble winners for Sir What If and Benfica. We'll take a look at the stars of this treble winning team. European curse lifting team. And wow, I said I said season three was going to be a big one for Mr. Jao Felix. And it's 40 goals and 11 assists for the 21-year-old. Mind-blowing numbers there. We have Gonzalo Guedes with 18 goals, 11 assists. Talisca with 15 goals and 9. Bernardo Silva, 14 goals and 26 assists. Mind-boggling numbers there. Mouth-watering numbers. Luka Jovic with a big uh, Portuguese Cup final goal, getting 13 goals and 1 assist. Brian Cristante with 11 goals and 4 assists for him. Uh, Renato Sanchez doing quite well in there as we scroll down. Semedo got that Portuguese Cup goal as well. And then uh, Victor Lindelof, I do believe, picked up a big injury throughout the season. So it hindered his game time a bit. We have Jacques Cancelo obviously getting a bit of game time as well. As we scroll down, it was Oblak getting most of the game time in between the sticks this season. Edison took a bit of a back seat, but still played a major part in the squad. David Luiz now uh, has gone down a lot of overalls there, but he's still got 54 games. Roll down, a Di Maria not really having too much involvement this season. And Cohen Trout, yet another club veteran, getting 10 games in there, but... What a season it was. That has probably been one of the most successful seasons in this What If series, the treble in season three, especially for Benfica, considering their European trophy curse. So it just added to the storyline there. The stars aligned and the Portuguese giants finally got their hands on some European glory with their ex-players. The ex-boys coming back to Benfica, delivering success, which was expected. But it took three seasons. It took a while and the lads finally delivered. So I hope you guys did enjoy enjoy this one it has been an absolute blast recording this Benfica's X squad is absolutely amazing and they were able to do the impossible the treble one of the most successful seasons in Benfica history so I hope you guys did enjoy the video if you did make sure to drop a like down below make sure to comment on who your favorite player was what team we should do next and if there was anyone I did miss out on follow me on Twitter the link is in the description Turn on the notification bell, hit the subscribe button for more FIFA content, FIFA 20 career mode content coming your way, guys. It is going to be a massive year for the channel. It's going to be absolutely amazing. I'm loving all the support you guys are showing on the videos. I do appreciate it. But thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for making it all the way to the end. I've been BCHD, and I'll see you on the very next video.